steam locomotives in miniature at the steam workshop. This is rebuilding a 3 inch scale Garrett traction engine part 4. The rebuild is progressing slowly because I didn't dismantle this engine and the person who dismantled this engine in the first place no longer works for the steam workshop. I don't have an engineering drawing for this engine. All I have is a collection of photographs that thankfully were taken by Dave at various points of the dismantling process. So once again a big thank you goes out to Dave at the Steam Workshop for actually thinking ahead. My first job at the Steam Workshop was to rebuild a 5 inch gauge Chubb locomotive and I dismantled that and I didn't take any photographs but that wasn't a problem because I dismantled it and I was putting it back together but had it been my job just to dismantle it to pass it on to someone to rebuild it then I would have had to photograph the process. The previous clips have just shown me reassembling the Stevenson's link valve gear. There was no point in narrating that, it would have been very pedantic. It was a simple job of put the pins in, fit the washers, followed by fitting small split pins to hold the main pins in place. So I think it's time to see whether it goes or not. The first thing to do obviously is to oil everything that moves. Then I temporarily fit the flywheel, connect some air and give it a push. I didn't speak over the last bit, I thought it was better to let the engine do all the talking. And as you can see and hear, it ran quite well. It was a bit lumpy at first, but then suddenly everything freed off and off it went. I took a lot of time adjusting the crankshaft bearings to make sure that there is no play in the crankshaft, and I'm very pleased with that first run. There are a couple of parts of this engine that have been brutally broken off. This is one of them, and this like the other part that is similar, fit into the bottom part of the throat plate, which is the bit in front of the firebox, on the boiler. This was a quick fix, I dismantled the fitting, I then re-threaded the end part that's broken, made a new threaded part, silver soldered it in position, and the fitting is repaired. In the previous clip where I showed the engine running, it's worth remembering that there were no drain cocks fitted to the engine, so the cylinders were open to the atmosphere at each end. Now it's time to refit the drain cocks. One of them came out of the cylinder complete with the adapter, so it's been screwed back into the cylinder complete with the adapter. On all the drain cocks, I always use Loctite 542. I never use PTFE tape, it's too messy. Loctite 542 just seals the joint. You have to be careful when refitting drain cocks, and you can see how I'm doing this. I've screwed a quarter by 40 nut onto the end of the drain cock, and then I can use a socket to screw it in place. If you're used to working on full-size engines, steam or otherwise, it's good to remember that these are not full-size engines, and small parts like these drain cocks are very easily broken. These drain cocks proved to be a bit of a problem. As I screwed them into place, the lock nuts on the handles fouled the bottom part of the cylinder casting as I was screwing them back into the cylinder. The construction is that the steel handle is also threaded, that fits onto the threaded part, the part that I'm moving, and by using a brass lock nut it allows you to set this handle in the correct position to make sure that the hole is in the right place to let the water out of the cylinder at that end. I didn't like the way this was fouling the casting as I tightened it up, so I used a needle file to file off the lock nut, so the lock nut became thinner, as did the shaft that it sat on, and then it didn't foul the casting when I tightened it back in place. This is an alternative way of fitting a drain cock, but it's not a very good way of doing it because you can distort the body and then it leaks. I had a look in detail at this particular drain cock and there was a problem with it. The moving part and therefore the stationary part were quite badly scored. By using some grinding paste and rotating the part with a box key like this, the parts were lapped together. 
It was while I was doing this job that I realised that there wasn't actually a hole through the centre part at all in this valve, so it was a non-drain cock. So I reassembled the valve anyway, and then I set the valve to be at exactly the same angle as the other valve when it was open, then with the drain cock held in the machine vice on the drilling machine, and it's worth mentioning that I held the drain cock in the drilling machine's machine vice by the quarter by 40 nut that I fitted to the thread. I drilled a hole through the barrel, and now, as you can see, there's a hole all the way through. So I refitted the quarter by 40 nut and put the drain cocks back in place. By having a quick look at the photographs, I realised that I'd put the drain cocks in upside down. This lock nut sits at the top, but it still needed trimming because during the fitting process it had to be rotated, as you can see here. And previously the lock nut really badly fouled the cylinder casting, but now it doesn't. If you look carefully at the threaded part that's going into the adapter, you will notice that I fitted a copper shim washer. I have a few of these, so I tried various combinations of different thicknesses of washer to make sure that the drain cock ended up in the right position. Then I repeated the job at the other end, but I didn't need a shim washer because this had the adapter attached to the drain cock and it fitted perfectly into the cylinder. And now I can attach the actuating lever, or the operating lever, the small steel arms that attach to the valves are threaded at both ends, one end to adjust the position of the valve, and the other end to accept a bolt like this with a lock nut on the top so that the bolts holding the main operating arm, that's the long bit, don't work loose. You need to leave a little bit of play in this arm so that it operates the valve smoothly. And once the movement of the rod feels good, all you do is fit the lock nut on the top to hold it in position. What I have to do now is make sure that both of these valves are in perfect alignment so that as I move the rod like this, the valves open. And I'm checking the position of the holes in the barrel by using one of these bits of wire that I found near John's TIG welding machine. It's very important that these valves open and shut in sync with each other. So here, as you can see, there's a hole all the way through up into the cylinder. And the arms are in exactly the right position. So as I move the operating lever, the valves open and shut exactly at the same time, which they couldn't have done before because there wasn't a hole through one of the battles, but there is now. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.